Hi, welcome back to AT Math. Today, Chapter 10.1, Organizing and Displaying Data. All of Chapter 10 is going to go by pretty quick. It's mostly review of things you've already learned, but we just need to recap. Um, the displaying data, we're going to start with a bar graph. A bar graph simply displays data with vertical horizontal bars. Take a look down here. They're talking about fat content of a sub sandwich. You have bread, ham, turkey, cheese, and mayonnaise. Which ingredient contains the most fat? This is mayonnaise, because clearly mayonnaise is about 11 grams of fat. How many more fat grams are in ham than turkey? Well, ham has 6 and turkey has 3, so 6 minus 3 is 3. How many total fat grams are there in this sandwich? So if you had all these together, we well, you'd say 1 plus 6 plus 3 plus 9 plus 11. Add them all up, you'd say 30. What's the percent of total fat grams in the sandwich that are from turkey? Well, out of 30, turkey was 3, so you'd take 3 over 30, or 3 divided by 30, and you'd get 1 tenth. A double bar graph is the same idea, but they have two different values. A double bar graph has a key to distinguish between the two sets of data. So here, for instance, average attendance, football and basketball. You'll notice that the red is for football, the, I don't know, light orange is basketball. I'm not good with colors. In which year did State College have the greatest attendance for basketball? So just look in the light orange, and it looks like we have, or brownish orange, looks like this is the one, so in this year here, it's about at 15, and they're saying 2003, it should have been 2003, I'm not sure why they don't have that listed, but I can help them, look at that, just, there we go, looks like it's perfect, 2003. On average, how many more people attended a football game than a basketball game in 2001? So here, football was at 20, and that's 20,000. Uh, and here it's about 13,000. So I would just take 20 minus 13, which you have, which is 7,000. A line graph simply shows data using line segments. Now, instead of putting bars, they just have points. See the difference? This has a bar. Now, you, if you wanted to make this guy into a line graph, you simply would have had, you know, lines replaced like this. And here they're doing that instead of making bars, that's all. So use the graph to answer each question. Uh, what time was the temperature the warmest? Look and see here. The warmest was about here, and they said 4 p.m., and it was about at 81 degrees. During which four hour time period the temperature increased the most? Basically, you're going to see which has the highest rise, which is the steepest incline. And I would say yes from 8 to noon. And if you ran the numbers, you would see that's true. Why do you do this, by the way? Because if 7 have to crunch the numbers, you can just look to see where the increase and decrease is. A double line graph can be used to compare how two related data sets change over time. A double line graph has the same, same as a double bar graph. There's a double line graph. Why do you do that? To compare lines up and down. To show the differences between the two. So you notice, like right here, like, ooh, airline A really spiked high over airline B and notice how for a while airline B was over airline A. You do this to compare sales numbers, companies, ratings on a TV show versus another TV show. It's a way to compare one thing or another. It shows growth. In what month did airline B charge more than airline A? Well take a look here. B charged more than A right here. It looks like in April. And let's see. Identify the point where blue line's higher, so here's higher. In here, like September of that year is higher as well. In which month did the airline charge the same airfare? They said May, yeah, May you're exactly the same. And again, where else could you use this in real life? Imagine if you notice in towns you see gas stations right next to each other. If one gas station is consistently cheaper than the next gas station, customers might start going to the cheaper gas station. Although the gas station which sells their gas for a few pennies more every day might make that up in profit. So we get one or the other. Circle graph shows part of a whole. The entire circle represents 100% of the data, and each sector represents the percent of the total. In other words, simply it's a pie chart. How much does each one get? So in this case here, which two fruits together make up half of the fruit salad? Well, in other words, look for the two fruits that together make up half the circle. Well, these two here form half, so I would say banana and strawberry. Which fruit is used more than any other? What's the biggest slice? Which is cantaloupe. Choosing and creating an appropriate display. Given, use the given data to make a graph. Explain why you chose that type of graph. A bar graph is appropriate for this data because it would be a good way to compare categories. In other words, we have different things that we can put. Chicken, goat, horse, pig, sheep. And on the side, you would put, well, lowest number is 10, highest number is 38. I'd probably go 10, 20, 30, 40. 
That's what I would do. And here they did the same thing. They put chicken, goat, horse, pig, sheep. Now they went ahead and put 0 a sixteen twenty four two. I'm not sure why they did that. I'm going to cross that out. I think that must have been a mistake in the book. Because I'm saying that you should put uh, probably 10, 20, 30, and 40. And that would be the way I'd pull that off. And then just put the appropriate bars to it. That would be the way. Uh, circle graph is appropriate for the data because it shows categories as part of a whole. In other words, what you would do here is you could find the fraction. What I mean is if you have the division of crops between corn, fallow, mixed vegetables, soybeans, and wheat, you'd add all these up. 70 plus 50 plus 10 plus 40 plus 30. Easy way to do that, by the way, is 70 and 30 make 100. 50, 10, and 40 make 100. So there's actually 200 total. And then take each number and divide by that. In other words, to find the percentage of corn, you take 70 divided by the 200. And notice here you have 35%. And so on and so forth for each one. And then when you make your circle. Now, you know, it, there's a couple ways to do this. How do you make 35% in a graph? Well, if you cut in the middle of 50%, you can make a little less for 35, or they're actually showing you how many degrees to actually take it. They're simply saying, okay, well, 35% of a 360-degree circle, you take 360 divided by 0.35, which is 126. So, yes, if you went out and you know got a, you know, a um, protractor and protracted 126 degrees, you could have it perfectly, which is fine. Although, in fairness, most computer programs, I know that if you can put in the amounts, they'll make you the pie chart itself. Given the data to make a graph, explain why you chose that type of graph. In this case here, they have you know, different years and they have different student amounts. They say a line graph is appropriate for this data because it will show the change in enrollment over a period of time, like this here. That's true. Uh, you could also have a bar graph. You know, there's not there's no one size fits all. So, in this case, my feeling is provided that you are able to. Um, coherently put the data. I don't care if it's a line graph or a bar graph or anything like that. Clearly a circle graph might be hard in this case because we're trying to show growth. And that's that.